Hi, and welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. In this video, I wanted to talk about something that I'm sometimes asked about in the comments, and something that I was curious about before I moved here to the Midwest. I'm originally from Alaska, and most of my exposure to Midwestern reality was from the Little House on the Prairie book series. So my assumptions about the Midwest were that everything was buried under 20 feet of snow all winter, and that everything got destroyed by tornadoes in the summer. Each individual tornado is a violent local vortex in the atmosphere. The tornado's parent is a thundercloud, and the vortex suddenly descends to rotate wildly along the earth in an upward spiraling motion. The funnel consists of air and moisture to which dust, mud, and debris are added by the inrushing winds, estimated to be rotating at speeds as high as 500 miles an hour. It's probably along the same lines of Midwesterners thinking that Florida is destroyed on a weekly basis by hurricanes, or that Alaskans have bears in their yard constantly. Of course, we did actually have bears in the yard pretty frequently when I lived in Alaska, but that's another story. Anyway, tornadoes are definitely something that happen here in the Midwest, although they aren't quite as common as you might think. I've never personally seen one, and I've lived here almost 20 years now. The closest I've been to an actual real-life tornado was back in 2011, when I was working in North Minneapolis, and a tornado went through that area. We heard the sirens go off, we saw the sky get really dark, so we did the proper Minnesota thing and rushed outside to look for the tornado. Um, that is not actually the recommended response, but we did get to see some plywood kind of drifting down through the sky. We didn't get to see the actual funnel cloud, though. Now, Minnesota and other parts of the Midwest definitely have a lot of tornado awareness. We have frequent uh, tornado siren tests. The first Wednesday of every month is kind of tornado awareness day. You hear the sirens go off. And we've gotten to the point where you hear them go off and you kind of check the date and time before you look and see if there's an actual tornado coming, because that's usually what it is, is just the test day. And for those not familiar, tornado sirens sound a bit like a air raid warning siren. A lot of them are actually leftovers from the Cold War. It's the very classic old siren sound. <laughs> I've also done a little bit of storm chasing with some friends, but again, we never actually got to see a tornado in person, just some severe thunderstorms. Now, Minnesota is kind of on the north end of the traditional tornado alley, that zone of the U.S. that gets a lot of tornadoes due to its position in the continent, the masses of hot and cold, wet and dry air that sort of all collide in the middle of the country and cause this area of frequent tornado outbreaks. One thing that I've been seeing on the news lately is that Tornado Alley is supposedly moving to the east with climate change, with global warming. Storms are getting supposedly more intense, more frequent, and moving farther to the east than they typically were in the past. That's something I'll get into a little later in the video, but first off, I wanted to look at some tornadoes that came through this area on May 15th particularly one that went through New Richmond, Wisconsin. Now, I came across some great storm chasing footage from Scott McNally on YouTube showing the New Richmond tornado touching down, going through some farm fields, and going across several farms out in that New Richmond area. I'll throw that video up here, and I will throw a link to Scott's YouTube channel and his website. I'll put a link up above here and down in the comments. You can check out more of his videos and some of his photos from Storm Chasing. Scott was nice enough to let me use his video, so thank you, Scott. I really appreciate that. And this is some really cool footage. This is a lot better look at what one of these tornadoes looks like from the ground when it comes through. A few days after this tornado, our friend Andy, who owns a small plane here in the Twin Cities, contacted me and asked if I wanted to go look for the ground track of the tornado. He was interested to see can we see the scar, the path that the tornado took across the ground? Is it visible from the air? Uh, can we see some of the damage that happened? And what does that look like? So we hopped in his plane, we flew over there, and yeah, we were actually able to see some of the tornado damage from the air. Yeah, that looks like a spiral. That's, and that follows the path. That's about where it turned. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, that's totally, that's totally tornado damage right there. Wow. Yeah, that's totally it. Oh yeah, you can really see the uh, the spiral pattern. Yeah, yeah. There's a damaged barn or Is other there? building. It okay. looks like right at where it starts. Probably not going to look like anything if I zoom in. It's just going to be too shaky. Yeah, I'll go around again. I want to get a better look at it myself. Pretty much lifted off again just after this grove of trees. I think I don't really see anything that more up this way. I think that was probably the most 
most pronounced area. Looks like it went right across this farm. Yeah, looks like it went right through that shed. Oh, I see it. Yeah, I see the scour there. That's crazy. That's really well pronounced for being over a week old now. Right. Looks like the top of that silo, I wonder if it was missing before or after. Yeah, hard to say. Interesting. This was kind of neat. Again, I've never actually seen a tornado in person, and I had never been up close like this to uh, the ground damage or the ground scarring from a tornado. So it was really interesting to see what that looked like. We could actually see the spiral pattern on the ground where the wind had kind of whipped up the dirt and vegetation and whatever else was on the ground. You could also definitely see where it had gone through structures, leaving nearby structures mostly intact, but really damaging or destroying the ones that were hit directly. I also found some National Weather Service damage surveys that showed more detail on the ground from this particular tornado, including some of these damaged barns, vegetation damage, and even a whole concrete silo that was shifted off its foundation slightly. Now this wasn't even a particularly large tornado, I think this was an EF2. It was fairly low on the strength scale or damage scale, but you could definitely tell where it had crossed the ground, where it had crossed structures, and you could definitely see the damage it had done both from the ground and the air. And of course, while this is interesting to see, I do feel bad for the people who lost property, who lost structures. Fortunately, there were no deaths or major injuries with this storm, and I think that's partly due to the very robust warning system that we have these days, and people kind of know that the proper procedure for a tornado situation is to get undercover, not go out and look at the storm, no matter how curious you are about it, not stand near windows where you could have flying glass, not stand out near trees where you could be hit by debris or hail or other flying objects. When a tornado comes through, take cover and stay safe. So back to my earlier question about tornadoes getting more frequent, more damaging, bigger, stronger, moving to the east, is that actually happening? Well, it's hard to tell. There definitely seems to be a trend, if you look at tornadoes over time, of them increasing. This could be partly due to increases in the number of severe storms. It could be partly due to improvements in weather forecasting, improvements in reporting, improvements in weather science, sensors, satellite coverage, things of that nature. So it might just be that we're noticing more tornadoes but it might also be that tornadoes are increasing in frequency. I found a few decades of tornado maps on the NOAA website, and I put these together into a little animated GIF to see if I could spot any changes, any patterns in where these tornadoes were occurring, if they were in fact moving generally to the east. It's really hard for me to tell, and this data kind of ended in 2011, so it's hard to really see anything from the past decade here, but to me it's it kind of random. It looks like these tornadoes are just happening all over the Midwest. And if you look at a map of all known tornado outbreaks since about the 1950s, yeah, they're all kind of in this same general region in the middle of the country. Now I guess the real traditional tornado alley, as it's called, is a little bit more to the west, Kansas, Nebraska, some of those Corn Belt states, while a lot of the general overall activity does reach easterly into Illinois, Ohio, areas like that, as well as north into Minnesota and Wisconsin. Now that could certainly change. The forecasts are calling for record-breaking temperatures this year, record-breaking storm conditions. We have been having a lot of weird weather lately. We've been seeing changes in the climate when it comes to drought conditions, rain conditions, really early heat cycles. We had a heat wave here in May that really affected a lot of things. It killed off some wildlife. It killed off some trees and whatnot in the area. So we've definitely had changes in the climate, and that could lead to stronger storms. I made that joke earlier about Florida being destroyed weekly by hurricanes, but it really does seem like Florida and southern parts of the U.S. are being affected more and more by hurricanes. We're getting more and more uh, coastline loss down there. And if, in fact, these tornadoes are moving more to the east over time, well, they're going to start impacting more populated areas, more heavily developed areas, possibly areas of the country that are not built to withstand tornado events. People might not have as good of basements or storm shelters or well-built structures, and we could see more loss of life, more loss of property in the future. But when the clouds become unusually threatening, 
it is wise to take every possible precaution. That calls for forewarning. And it is the responsibility of the United States Weather Bureau to provide the public with information regarding the possibility of severe local storms, including tornadoes. Now, fortunately, weather forecasting is getting better and better all the time. We have better sensors, better satellites, better radars, and better trained weather forecasters to keep an eye on these things, provide early warnings, both with the old traditional sirens and cell phone warnings, things like that. Hopefully all that stays funded. There had been talk of cutting a bunch of those programs, but those are the kinds of things that really help out all kinds of businesses, people, farms, prevent damage, prevent livestock deaths, prevent human deaths and injuries. So keeping that kind of thing funded, I think is really critical. Personally, I would still like to see a tornado myself, preferably at a safe distance, but uh, maybe one of these days I'll actually be able to see one in person. I might do some more storm chasing or something like that. One program that I've looked into but I've not had time for is something called the Skywarn Spotter Program. And this is kind of a volunteer organization that trains people in storm chasing and trains you to use amateur radio, uh, weather watching techniques, go out and follow tornadoes or follow other severe weather and report on actual ground conditions, things like weather damage, hail, funnel clouds, um, get those ground truth reports back to the National Weather Service who would otherwise be relying on radar, on satellites, which don't always tell you exactly what's going on on the ground. So these Skywarn spotters can help provide a little bit more information to get those early warnings out, tell communities and farms and people in the path of a tornado to get undercover, let people know when something's coming. That's something, like I said, I've looked into that Skywarn program. I would love to do it. I have not had a lot of time to do that. So that might be something we look into more in the future. If you're interested in that yourself, I'll put some links down below in the description so you can check out that Skywarn program. I will also put links to all of the tornado data that I showed here, some of the maps, as well as Andy the Pilot's YouTube channel and Scott McNally's Storm Chasing channel. Those are both really interesting to check out. I hope this has been an interesting one for everybody. I know it's not quite my normal content, but I do a lot of weather satellite stuff, so I thought it would be interesting to maybe take a look at actual ground effects of some of that weather that we're often looking at from space, from satellite, from remote sensing. What do some of those things look like a little closer to the ground from a plane, from the ground after the fact in damage assessments or during the event from a storm chaser like Scott McNally? These are all interesting things to look at that can go into forecasters learning more about tornadoes, about the effects of tornadoes, the damage, the preparations you can do to reduce some of that damage. And it's just all really interesting stuff, at least to me. If you're more into my satellite and space content, well, don't worry, we will have plenty of that as well in the future. Thank you to everyone for watching, and we'll see you next time.